What is up, YouTube? What are some of the pros and cons to selling on uh, eBay in 2024? Now, this stuff's constantly changing. And um, so I've been in the business since um, I made my LLC in 2016. Kind of took it serious for a little bit. Ended up quitting my job a little later that year to do it full time and failed. Ended up having to go back to a job because um, I blew through too much cash uh, thinking that I was balling selling all the parts except for not realizing you should uh, stack that money up to buy more machines. And then um, 2019, I ended up quitting my job again and I've been doing this full time again since 9-11-2019. There's been some drastic changes. One of those being, you know, going from wasn't sure if I would make it to uh, 2020 happening, all of that stuff thinking that that was gonna be detrimental to the business. It wasn't, it was actually fantastic. We sold a ton of parts during this time. Then um, after 2020, everything's kind of starting to come back down, but there's been a whole lot of changes. Bill, so we'll start with the pros because I know all y'all came here is to hear me complain about eBay. Um, and believe me, I have my complaints. So one of the pros is the fact that if you wanted to sell local, versus selling parts on eBay. You might take, what is this here? It's a Kalex 300 cylinder head. If I post this where I live, you're here in BFE, Oklahoma, nobody's gonna come by it. I'm not gonna sell but just a little bit of this stuff. So I don't even bother with local, everything's online. I can buy, I can take this and I sell it. I ship it to whoever here in the USA. We do not do actual outside of the US shipping uh, what am I, why am I drawing a blank on international <laughs> shipping? We don't do international shipping. So we participate in the eBay global shipping program where they allow us to ship it to their facility. And from there, they ship it out and deal with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know much details on it because I can't find many details on it. Another big plus is you're able to get top dollar for your products. Now, don't get me wrong. I generally try to price below other sellers because I want to make the sale if a... Kalex 300 head is selling today. I want to make that sale. Same thing with this. I want to make this sale. If I have an opportunity to sell that LTZ 50 head, I want to be the one to sell it. So we price slightly under everybody else and we're able to get the sales and move it through. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't always work real well because what happens is other sellers will come through and put parts right below you. So you end up not being the cheapest price. And I've seen this with a couple sellers. <clears throat> One of them was uh, Power Sports Nation. I listed an LTZ. I bought two LTZs back to back and I didn't, I don't like listing them back to back. So I listed one of them and then we stripped and listed the, ne the next one the following week. Well, as soon as I went to look at prices for something, I had noticed that Power Sports Nation had just came in through and undercut my part. And you know, it's just business, you know, you can't get salty about it. But you will have other sellers come through and chop the price down a little bit and then their item sells and then your item will sell. The next one is um, the freedom of it all. Now, I have the ability to work when I feel like it. I still do choose to get up early. I've been up since 2.30 for some reason today and I think it is 5.30 in the morning right now while I'm shooting this video. It is still dark outside. Um, I can stay here late and work all night instead. I, I used to have a shop with no AC. So during the summertime, I would work through the entire night and sleep during the day and just deal with shipping because it was easier and I had the freedom to do so. So that's part of the fun that you have selling used parts on eBay is because as long as you get this stuff shipped out, everything else is up to you. However much you want to sell, if you want to do a little bit every day, if you want to do a lot, that's up to you. I don't have to miss stuff of my kids when they're doing stuff at school because I can take off whenever I'm ready to take off. When it's time I want to go ride, what was that, Tuesday this week? It's uh, nice. Finally broke out of the winter. Winter weather. It's uh, a little warmer outside. I think it's 70 degrees in January. And lo and behold, I'm like, screw it. Let's go. We're going to go ride. And we had a fantastic time. Another thing I like about selling on eBay, and this has all changed over the years, because when I started, we were still using PayPal, but now they've switched out to eBay managed payments. Now, everybody hated managed payments at first. 
and uh, so did I because it was an absolute mess. The, the payouts were just inconsistent. Was, I, I hated it. Anyway, they fixed it all. Now it's pretty decent. So I get paid five, six days a week. Every day except for Saturday. Now that has a little bit to do with my bank specific. I get two payouts on Sunday night and then a payout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I get paid every single day of the week. Another pro to selling used parts is because what you can buy to part out on eBay and be able to turn a profit. Now, a lot of machines, once they're to their dilapidated, sat out in a field for all these years, they're trash. Something like this Arctic Cat right here, I bought this uh, a few weeks ago for um, 350 bucks. This is stripped. When you turn it over, it sounds like absolute shit. But uh, it's got a good set of tires on it that I'm going to use for something else that we fix. I was able to score the battery. And I'm going to throw these grips. The brand new grips. Got to put brand new grips on it. And uh, so I'm going to put those on something else too. But the gas tank's jacked. It, it's just overall... I would call this machine non-repairable. It's not worth it. It's a $1,200 machine running and riding. So the plus side to eBay is being able to take something like this. This cylinder head is, I want to say, 150 And where is it at? This air box isn't even right. That CDI box right there is $500. So it's a big plus to be able to do that and just, you know, I can go buy something for $100, $200, and strip it down, and turn it into parts, put it on eBay, and sell it, and turn a profit. A lot of times, it's a good profit, but a lot of that comes down to what you buy, because you can't just buy everything. This here, Moto 4, that's not, that's not really worth it. This came with a buyout, so normally I wouldn't buy something like this, unless it came with something and it's locked up so it's not worth anything literally all right now we're here for the cons this is what everybody here came here for what do you hate about ebay holy shit! i have my weeks where i love ebay and i have my weeks where i just despise them what do i hate about ebay ebay doesn't back their sellers up anymore i i hear a lot of people talk about they used to and i felt like they did a decent job Back when I started, I remember getting ripped off on a few items when I was smaller, um, when I was a much smaller seller, which I think is worse when you're a smaller seller. It's like the less stuff you sell, the more likely you are to get ripped off. But they, they took care of it. I really wish they'd go back to taking care of their sellers because if they got rid of bad sellers on eBay and just got rid of them, had real people look at what's going on in these situations and establish okay these are the sellers that need to go that would fix it i mean because everybody makes mistakes and i'm willing to own that some of my negative feedback is my fault but there's like 50 percent of that that's not another con with ebay and um i i wish i paid more attention when i started to know a little bit more and uh, maybe if some of y'all are a seasoned ebay seller that really have been in it longer than i have could put a comment down there is it seems like they're stacking a lot of fees up now to allow you to get sales so i've noticed that now you have the off-site ads now i've been using them and if you're curious about that hundred dollar credit thing uh, that it takes forever to get that and i've gotten two of them for sure possibly a third one and by when i say it takes forever to get it i think i've had been running those ads for three months before i actually got that credit and some of the people I know said they didn't see anything about the offsite ads credit. Um, I've been meaning to make a video about how the offsite ads have done for me. But it seems like it's it's just stacking up fees. Now I think we're doing twelve dollars a day. Don't quote me on that. It's like ten to twelve dollars a day. It might even be nine dollars is what we're actually currently doing. And um I, I, I don't know that it's really helping my sales. Like when you look at it. It says it's helping your sales, but I don't know. You know, when we started, I could have swore eBay did that for us. And that was part of what you were paying eBay fees for. Now, another thing that they've been doing for a long time is promoted listings. Now, these promoted listings will, like, 
So you search, we'll, uh, we'll use, for example, find me something. Find me a part, find me a part, find me a part, find me a part. Here's a common part. This is definitely a common part. This is a uh, 2001 Honda Foreman 450 rear hub, right rear hub. Now, if you have a promoted listing and you're paying like a lot of money worth of a uh, fee for it, uh, it's percentage, because I know I set all of our stuff for nothing over like mm, 7 or 8%. And then, um, but if you're paying 50% promoted listing fees, <laughs> this hub's going to be number one when somebody searches. Now, whether or not they buy it, that's a different thing. But if they buy it, because it's the number one on there, you pay 50% fees for that. Yeah, an extra 50%. So if it's a $14.99 item, you're gonna pay $750 on just promoted listing fees for that item, plus regular transactional fees and all that. Which kinda, it stacks up to, that's quite a bit of fees. Some of the stuff they do with us with shipping, I, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but honestly, we only have problems every now and then. You know, I, I see a lot of people give USPS like a really bad rap, but they're really not that bad. I mean, we have maybe 18 packages get lost a year out of about five to six thousand that we ship you when you look at the big picture of that that's not that bad from what i've noticed when it comes to package theft like oh it says it was delivered but somebody stole it off my porch that is worse with ups we only ship i would be willing to bet 150 to 200 packages a year and that's me being gracious because recently with ground advantage coming out we're not shipping very much at all through UPS, but we notice more stolen packages with UPS than anything. And it, it's kind of odd, kind of odd. I really wish eBay was humans again. I, I don't know how to say it, but like you call in, like you can't hardly call in no more. And then if you call in, you get somebody foreign. And I realize like they can do the job but they can't pay attention to what you're saying if they barely speak English. Now, I realize we're not the whole world, but the majority of the country is English speaking or Spanish speaking or other languages. But I don't know what language these other people speak that doesn't allow them to all the way understand what you're trying to say. So I had a problem um, with UPS packages on the return address. It has my phone number on there. That's my personal phone number. I don't want that on there because of an issue I had in the past where a guy bought an engine, calls me five times back to back, like back to back. I finally answer, you sold me the wrong engine. I bought an engine for my Rancher 350. Well, I mean, we're pretty small, so I know what we've bought and sold. I'm like, dude, we ain't had no Rancher 350 engines. You got the wrong guy. He's like, this is the engine I got right here. And I'm like, send me some pictures. He sends me pictures and lo and behold, he bought an engine for a 1986 Honda Fortrax 350D, which is nothing similar to a Honda 350 at Rancher 2006 model. Anyway, I got a little off track there. I tried to call into eBay to ask them, how do I get this number off of there? I spent an hour and a half on the phone with these, this lady could not comprehend what I was telling her. I, I don't know if they, they need to, to hire some, some normal Americans that talk like normal Americans do, you know, are able to communicate. Because I can only imagine how bad it is if you don't speak English and you only speak Spanish and you tried to call in and you get somebody who doesn't speak English very well and I guarantee you their Spanish is bad. And that's if you can even get somebody. Now everything's online and you type it into there, like, I need customer support. I need customer support. And they give you nothing. The eBay case system needs some work. I had a package going to Hawaii. Go figure. Guy bought a, uh, a brake pedal. We shipped it out. We shipped it out on time. It just takes a little bit longer to get stuff to Hawaii. Well, this was taking just a little bit longer than it should have. So he opens an unpaid item. Not unpaid item case. It's a uh, item not received. I'm like, hey. We're working on it. We'll open a case with USPS and uh, see what we can do. Well, they don't give you no time. eBay doesn't give you no time. 
They're like, look, if this ain't delivered now, you better give them their money right back. And I'm like, golly, man, like, at least give us a chance to figure out where this part is. Lo and behold, um, and it, is, it ends up getting delivered like three weeks later. But um, the guy left negative feedback and was able to open a case against us, which we've maybe won a year because we didn't respond within the three days. And I was just trying to figure out where it was. Like, it's what I mean if eBay had humans over there that um, had emotion and understood, like, what we're actually doing, that would be fantastic. Overall, is it still worth it to sell on eBay in 2024? Now, this is January. We don't know what all the year is going to bring. But I can tell you what. If you're sick and tired of your day job, this is better. Any business, no matter what business you do, is going to have its downsides. eBay's making changes. Their stock is down right now, so I believe they're going to start making some changes for the positive instead of just as far as like competing with Amazon, where it's, it's gonna be hard to compete with Amazon. I mean, you buy something on Amazon, Amazon actually ships it, and they make that stuff happen fast. I can't do that. There is no way without paying for overnight shipping, which is worth, which is cost more than most of these parts are worth, to make that be able to happen for a customer. But Amazon is, where Amazon can't do the used parts. Some of this stuff you can't buy new. Look, what is this here? 84 ATC 200M, I can't even remember what that is. It's a Honda three-wheeler. Those crankcases you can't get no more. Not that they're sought after, because obviously I've had them since February of 2021. You know, Amazon can't compete with that. They can't do this. They can't do used parts like this. And maybe they can. Maybe somebody from Amazon will hear that see this video, and they will decide to find a way to make it possible for sellers like us to take used part product like this and put it onto Amazon instead of eBay. I mean, you know how cool that would be for me not to have to ship no more? All I do is take pictures and get it to the Amazon facility. Thanks for watching. And if you got value from this video, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. I appreciate your guys' uh, comments and, and giving me feedback on stuff that you want to hear on these videos. You know, a lot of this stuff is normal to me. This is my day-to-day, -day, how you store these parts. This is just normal. This is what I do. So I don't know that y'all want to see the video on it. So if you want to see a video on some, put it down below. I'll, I'll pump out a video, two or three videos a week if y'all give me enough ideas. You know, like the scrap metal, this stuff. A lot of that goes to the trash. Those are a lot of parts. Like that's a good front Grizzly 600 dip. But these things are selling for 40 bucks and I'm, that's not even worth shipping for 40 bucks. It's, and then it sits on the shelf, clutters the shelf. Y'all get to selling something, make some money. You know, if you got a boss you hate, this is an easy way out. It worked for me, it'll work for you.